What's up everybody, it's Stefan here from Mod to Fame and we are back with another video. That's right, you see it, the panties behind me and we about to jump into that. Anyway, let's jump into it, let's go. So it seems like every time I've taken this car out, the last few times it started raining, it was wet, but you know, we was, we was having fun, we was going on a drive. So as you guys saw in the last video, you can click the link here where we drove uh, up north down some beautiful roads, it started pouring on us. So I never washed the car since then. So actually what I wanted to do is just give you guys my routine of how I recover from driving through that much dirt with a car that I barely drive, period. And you would think that you like, oh, it's raining, so don't take it out at all. But that's not me, man. I, I mean, I drive to, when I do drive, I drive, I don't, I don't play. So I'm taking you through my step-by-step -step process and how I clean my cars after getting them so dirty. Anyway, come on. All right, so I'm trying to pick it up on the camera to show you before. This is before. This is all sorts of dirt, salt, everything that it picked up from the roads. So as you can see, man, it's, it's quite filthy. And everything seems to attract like right on that back area right there. The wheels get absolutely gray. My exhaust tips, ugh, they get super disgusting. Um, and this is the worst feeling, right? This is a car that you look at in a garage and you're like, oh, it's my baby, blah, blah, blah. So you hate to see it like this, but it is what it is, man. I mean, it's a, it's a car at the end of the day and it's supposed to just be enjoyed. Um, but you guys are more than welcome to take a quick break and let me know in the comments right now what's the dirtiest you've ever seen your car before. Don't get me wrong, she still look good though. She's not in her lowest setting though. She's in like a higher setting right now in terms of the rod height, but it still looks good. Yeah. So we back here at our friends at Stretch Auto Spa. If it sounds a little loud, it's because work is happening. So I hope y'all can bear with me and be okay with some of the noise. But we about to jump into the process that I do, which some of it I stole from this man right here. You know what I mean, my man Stretch. But uh, yeah, we about to jump into this. The first step that I do is rinsing the car down with a power washer. So I'm currently using a pretty significant one. The one that I'm using is a North Star, pretty powerful one. So what I have to do is that power washer, this power washer is strong enough to take off uh, decals, paint protection. So I gotta make sure I keep a strong distance away. But right now it's in an off mode, I just wanna kind of rinse the car down. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna wet the car, although the power washer is off. So the benefit of using a power washer is that it breaks up the dirt. It helps break it down so that when you use your mitt, you're not dragging the dirt across your paint. If you don't have a power washer though, just you know do a light brush. All right, so that's after a power wash, and it already looks like the car is clean from power washing it. Now, that's because this car, I always keep a good amount of wax built up on this car, so dirt doesn't stick as much. If I were to combine that with uh, some sort of a ceramic coat system, I think that I wouldn't even need to wash this car right now. So that's actually in the future. Something we plan to do is ceramic coat the car, because it took me a while, but I'm officially a believer of ceramic coat. But back to the next step. So if you notice, I have two buckets here. One is my wheel bucket. The other one is my body bucket. So what I like to always do is work on my wheels first. It's the most dirty thing. So I like to just knock it out the way. So let's do that now. Something you'll never see me use on my custom aftermarket wheels is any sort of acid. So that bottle has like an acetone in it. And uh, what it does is it, on factory wheels, it's not as abrasive, but it does eat away at time. But on chrome lip, um, like these wheels are brushed aluminum with a chrome lip, you never wanna see nothing like that. So what I actually do is just kind of break it up with this, I break it up with this guy. It makes my job a little bit easier. And that gives you an idea of the dirt that was built up on there. And I uh, hit the tire a little bit. And then the rest I do by hand with my wheel mitt. 
And after some brushing with this guy here, my little corner on the cob, I actually get the crevices of the wheels and stuff. So it leaves a nice soapy residue. And now let's do the rest of the wheel, like that dirty ass front one. All right guys, so as you can see it, I mean, it's hard to say that this car is still dirty, but um, this is after power washing and after washing the wheels, the car is almost ready to go. But as you can see, I haven't uh, soaked the car down yet, but this is what I mean when I say it's important to use something that's gonna break up the dirt first, because now I'm just gonna use the mitt to kind of just go over the car to get the, 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 the bad parts first. But something that I always do um, with my body I use two different mitts so I use a mitt for the top of the body like what I'm using right now <sighs> right because the top of the body is nowhere near as dirty as the bottom is gonna be bottom half so I do the top part of the car first and then I grab a different mitt and do the bottom half because what you don't want to do is drag the dirt from the bottom to the top so what I always do is I always stay above the mirror. I stay above the mirror. So above the mirror is safe, but I'm gonna go ahead and lather this up. As I mentioned, the top half of the car got soaked, and now it's about time to do the bottom half, which is I usually go below that, that door line and lower is what I usually do. So two mitts and a whole lot of soap and water later. Uh, we ready to rinse all this soap off. Drip, 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 drip. All right, so now that we all rinsed off, now it's time to dry up, get you a nice chamois, and go to town. OMG, look how pretty she looking. Look at that shine, baby. Look at that, good God. This car cleans up so nice, man. It cleans up so nice. I'm about to take y'all outside and show you the after. But I got one last step that I do, um, usually, especially after the car was dirty, is I usually wax it, which I'm not gonna do in this video. I'm not gonna do a full paste wax, but actually what I'm gonna do is a quick wax because I wanna keep some sort of a moisture barrier for the next time when I take the car out. It's winter here in New York, so the roads are continuously salty, dusty, or salt dust. So I want to try to keep that off the car as much as possible. So that's why I keep some sort of a layer, whether it's wax, quick wax, something um, to do that. But like I said, we do need to talk about ceramic coatings because that would be the answer to that more on a long-term basis rather than me having to put in the manual labor every time. Exhibit A, quick wax. Another pro tip that I didn't share with you guys, but uh, this car is a 2011. So how many years old is that now? It's about to be 2019. That's about to be eight years old. If you look at my lights though, they are crispy, icy, like as if the car is brand new. So what I found is if you wax, when you wax the car, if you wax and polish your headlights and taillights, it'll keep that same protective barrier as it does for the paint. So that's another pro tip, man. When you wax your car and polish your car, wax and polish your headlights. Some people, when they walk, when they wipe, they wipe in a circular motion. Um, me, personally, I prefer to wipe in long, straight motions. Um, sometimes if you wipe in a circular motion, God forbid there's something on your, your uh, your, your cloth or whatever, it could leave that same 
circular swirls. Like you're training your paint to build it for swirls. So instead, I go in long, straight motions. It's, uh, it's much better, in my opinion. But you do what you feel. Alright y'all, so that's pretty much it man. That was the breakdown of how I clean my particular cars. How you do it, everybody got their different system. Um, but there's someone on YouTube right now looking at the best way to get that heavy salt, that heavy grime off their car. I just wanted to show you guys how to do it. That, or the way that I do it. There are professional detailers, I am not one. They are gonna tell you in the comments everything that I did wrong. So you are more than welcome to go look at their comments and then check out their pages. Maybe they have the right answer. This is just something I wanted to do for y'all real quick. And plus it gives me an opportunity to connect with my M2 effort. You can get this one available right now at modofitfame.com. You see the Mod of Fame on the sleeve, M2 effort on the chest. But anyway, I hope y'all guys like this video. But until the next one, it's your boy Stefan here from Mod of Fame. And then this Porsche Panamera Turbo that's icy, icy. We out, we out.